Lord. There you go. Yeah, we're not here in a tropical garden. No. Although it almost looks like one. Is it not real? No, it, it's living wall. Living wall. Oh. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> yes. It's yes, planted. Yes. Yeah, it's planted. My goodness, I'm gonna. That's a good idea when I get home. <laughs> yeah, a, a living wall. A living wall. Awesome. Living wall. Yeah, we are here at the Frankfurt Musikmesse. Yes. 2019, and uh, I was very happy to mm -hmm. meet you today. That was fun for me too. Actually, yeah, I'm having and, a good time. And, and, uh, yeah, it's your first time here. Uh, never been in, in here before. No. It's the first time. Yeah. Uh, you've been to the Nam show in 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 uh, Nam. LA. Uh, uh, nope. No, never been there. Never been to any trade fairs? Uh, Not really. This is the first time. Uh, and how you like it? Uh, I'm having a great time. But the, the reason I haven't probably is because uh, the, uh, whoever I was working with uh, all that time were the ones that were doing this. Okay. You know, and I would be the hired hand, so, you know, not, not necessary. Y you you know? always stayed more in the background? Yep, yep. But that's okay because... Uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, it's hard for me to know what to expect when I do this. Uh, whereas the, everybody else that's done it for, you know, all their careers, that, you know, they're used to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not usually me they come to. Yeah, yeah. See. But I, so I, I do feel privileged that everybody's wanting to know yeah, yeah. what's happening. Uh, th there was a lot of audience today at your Q&A. Yes, there was. Was that a lot of audience? Yes. It, you, it were surprised? Like you were surprised? You were surprised? I was. You said you were a little bit nervous. Why? Uh, because I'm not usually the one that sits in front of those people. Okay. Do I need to look at that? Yeah, we can look there. I'm not yeah. usually the one that, that uh, with all the bands I've ever been in, it's usually the leaders of the bands that get, you know, interviewed and things. And... And if you're just if you're just a hired hand, there's no reason to interview you because, you know, you, you wouldn't expect anyone would be interested in that. Well, yeah. They're more interested in the star stars, you see. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit surprised when they asked me to do this because I thought, well, why me? <laughs> <laughs> That's the attitude you get about yourself when you're uh, when you're uh, part of something that you're not legally. Uh, not legally, but uh, where you're not necessary as to be interviewed. Okay. Because okay. the main guys get interviewed, mm -hmm. and you're just the guy that's playing the keys. Mm -hmm. So it's I was a little bit amazed when I got the offer to come over here, <laughs> and and I thought I was me. I was telling my wife over and over and over. I'm scared. I'm scared. What am I going to talk about? What do I say? What do I say? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I got to play in front of people. What? You know? And so. Now I know how to do it, but uh, I didn't before because you guys are really, it's like you're the leader of the band. And I'm, I'm sitting here and you're asking me things and then I'm, I'm telling you so you can get it right, mm -hmm. you see. But uh, uh, to be honest, you, you were not only yeah. playing the keys, you were playing the keys in many, many famous very bands yes, and, oh, and, and with famous acts. Actually, yeah. And uh, I was listening around uh, in the Circle Stage, which is a new concept of yes. the trade fair here in, in oh, Frankfurt. Really? Yeah, right, yeah, it's right. real. Right. For this year, it's very new. And uh, the people were talking, oh, Rabbit Bandrake, the legend, the keyboard wizard. I'm a legend? Uh, yeah, oh, that's man. what I heard. My ego you won't ever let me go there. <laughs> it really won't. You never thought of yourself as a keyboard wizard, as a legend? I always thought of myself uh, uh, as a keyboardist in work or a keyboardist out of work. Uh, <laughs> I have worked very hard, and sometimes when I am out of work, sometimes it could be my fault, and sometimes it couldn't be. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, if you're, I guess I might as well use the word, if you're a sideman, uh, uh, you're, you're, only, you're only as good uh, as you are to someone as long as they like keep liking what you're doing as soon as they don't want you anymore or need you anymore then you lose that job because they might have moved on mm -hmm. you see and uh the thing is uh so then you sit i write music all the time every day it's in my head now. yeah it was very interesting yeah. you get, get your music ideas from everywhere uh, oh. from the birds in the trees and uh, when your toilet flash you yes, always made, yes. Yeah. I, fl I, I flushed the toilet i thought hey Get my uh, two-track recorder, put it out. Well, not in the water, but just <laughs> so it could get the sound. And, it, and 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 it's just a monstrous sound. And and but then you if you, then you do stuff like reverse it, 
cut it in pieces, move it around, and make some sort of horror film soundtrack out of it. Uh, I, I'm a science fiction and monster fan, and have, <laughs> have been since I was a little kid. And like on this table, my mom came into my bedroom once, and I had uh, dirt from the garden all over the desk, and I had all these plastic models of monsters okay. <laughs> and uh, in their scenes, like I saw them in the movies. And I even put uh, uh, real hair on the wolf man, <laughs> my model of the wolf man, you know, and my mama said, I think I might need to take you to see somebody, you know what I mean, like a psychiatrist, you know. But I was, anything that has a lovely effect, I was always into, so, and then and, and that transferred into sound as well. Okay. So, and you can buy, any kind of sample you can think of online, but but I'm I'm making my own, yeah. you know. Uh, you told us today that uh, you learned nothing in school nothing. except music. Uh, well, I didn't. I <laughs> never. I took all the normal classes in college you're supposed to, but I never showed up. So <laughs> I literally made in history zero, nothing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> in math and economics zero, and any other kind of classes uh, zeros. But in music. I passed, I, was, I did so well, at the end of the ter term, when you start getting your test re uh, results and things, or start taking your test, I went to my teacher and said, hey, I've joined this band in Dallas and they want to go to uh, LA to do a club gig, and, but, but uh, do I need, when do I get to take the test to, so I can finish this and, and move on? And then the teacher looked at me and said, well, you don't really need to take the test. You know, so you're free to go. Mm -hmm. So, what do you mean? I don't. Have, everybody has to take the test. Yeah, but you don't because you know I've heard you, and I've he, he, he to, I to, I told him my teacher I don't want to play Beethoven. I don't want to play Mozart. Don't want to play classical. I'll pick that up as I go. I already knew. Uh, I want to be able to play the piano. Period. Mm -hmm. And so he he took me into a different room with, with the piano, and he just taught me scales. You know, I didn't have to learn anybody's music. Okay. And 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 uh, he he strengthened my fingers. He taught me, uh, you know, uh, the uh, chord the, progressions. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. And uh, and so whenever we 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 had to, each student in the class had to go home and prepare some kind of music, classical music that they had put together themselves. And uh, and when I I turned up. I, I got up and do my bit, and well, what are you going to play? Uh, and so I, I'm going to play some Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> so I, I did a boogie. Okay. And my yeah. teachers, he was laughing, and, and it wasn't passing, but it wasn't necessary to pass, you know. And he was just overwhelmed that he helped a musician mm -hmm. uh, achieve his goal, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, it worked out fine for you it worked out for fine many for me. years. Yes. And uh, talking about the big names, yeah. uh, the Who. Yeah, yeah, uh, fabulous. Yeah, how many it. years you were involved? Thirty with the group? years. Thirty years with yeah. the Who. Thirty it's years. Your with longest the job. Longest job, and I thought it would be my last job. <laughs> really? You know I me. Mean? I thought that I would uh, retire with the Who. You know? Okay. But uh, it just didn't work out. You're not in control of things. Okay. What happened? Uh, What what really happened is uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess at some of it. I have to be honest right now. Uh, maybe they're still huge, and but I just wonder if they make as much money as they used to make. Okay. Um, and, and or whether it's gone down a bit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the reason I think that they might be shedding some musicians is because of the money. Mm -hmm. Because they okay. they refuse to pay it. Okay. You know, but we you don't ask for what you get. They offer you, you take okay. it. Or, they say take it or leave it, mm -hmm. and 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 even it, it got to a point where even that wasn't the way they wanted it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. who who brought you in the who in the first place? Pete. Pete. Yeah. Okay. Pete. Pete was my mentor, bef in the days of the earlier uh, times that I was with the who, because he heard me on other sessions and he used me on all of his records. Ah, solo records. Yep. Okay. And, and so Pete took me under his wing, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he really liked and enjoyed my creativity and stuff like that. On the Face Dances album, you know, I was free to play what I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know that little piano relic that goes you know way down the scale kind of thing from the top on one of the songs I can't remember. Uh, nobody he didn't balk at that. It, you know it's mm -hmm. part of the part of the song. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, Pete. Uh, 
Pete found me in a band I was already in okay. called Crawler. Oh, in, Crawler. In okay, okay. You know about yeah, that? Yeah, I've heard about it. And Pete and uh, Ronnie Lane were, um, they were being interviewed on, I can't remember the name of the big show back in those okay. days. But, uh, uh, that, but it, was a, it was a number one top music show. And, uh, and my band Crawler were playing on the same thing, uh, on the same show. And Pete and Ronnie Lane were being interviewed about the album Rough Mix, mm -hmm. which I played on as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so uh, I, I made some chord. I knew that because me and Pete were newly acquainted, but we were very friendly it straight off. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my band Crawler was sitting there waiting for their interview to stop. And then I made this huge on purpose sort of farting noise, <laughs> but it wasn't a real one. You know, okay. like you're blowing your yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah. And, and then Pete, Pete turned over and said, Rabbit, what's that? Stop it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was humorous. Okay. And he didn't get mad. It was humorous. It was like a comedy. And uh, we had a good laugh after it. And uh, Ronnie Lane was great to work mm -hmm. with. Uh, and, and so, you know, and, when, and I, I got to play with Eric Clapton. But the problem yeah. was, not at the same time. <laughs> I, went in, I went into the session. They said, we need a Hammond solo. I said, because uh, uh, Clapton's going to be on it too. And I said, oh, oh fantastic, because I'll feed off of Eric. And when I got there, he'd already done it. And it, it was just for me to do a little Hammond on the end. OK. You know? OK. But it, it, but it worked, because his music, Clapton's guitar playing was there. So I just imagined that, it, shut my eyes and imagined he was in the room. Great, you great. See? Yeah. And so I played to him. You, uh -huh. you, you also played with, uh, with Free, I think. Free, yeah. My probably my most famous favorite band. I was in. Really, yeah. really, really. Uh, you also played on uh, All Right Now. You no, you, not on All Right Now. That they, All Right Now. I saw Traffic, and Free, on their, Free on their first American uh, trip, uh, at the in Houston Coliseum, and. I'll tell you this, and, and I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not the kind of guy who like believes in all the ghosts and all that kind of junk. But I knew when I when Free came on, and I was in the audience there, and I was watching them, and I was going, my God, my God, what a band! <laughs> and then I, and in my head, I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with that band one day, and, and it just came into my head that I'm gonna work with them. Uh, I don't have, I don't know how. I mean, I was only a kid, and uh, when it came out, and uh, and and I lived in America, you know, I didn't <laughs> even live in England. But I said I'm playing with them, and when I came over here to England with Johnny Nash, <clears throat> first thing I did was play with them, Great. you know. Great. Well, it, we had to cross off Kirk Tetsu first because Paul Rogers was uh, busy with another thing he was doing, and so on the strength of that, I got in free. Mm -hmm. On the KKTR. Album. Okay, okay. And um, and uh, I enjoyed Paul Rogers singing so much. Yeah. Oh, he's he's almost like I don't know. I, I'm not even going to say it, but he's a soul man. Yeah, but but uh, I can remember you told us this afternoon. I did. That, yes, uh, he's uh, even compared to Roger Daltrey. No. Of the Who. Not not compared. Uh, not compared. No, you can't compare these two voices no. to two complete different styles. It's two complete different styles. Who's your favorite singer? One of them is heartless. <laughs> no, not heartless. Soulless. 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 They don't have any soul. Mm -hmm. They have, uh, they have a voice to sing with, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have any emotion. But you're not talking about Paul Rogers. No, you're talking about yeah the other. Yeah, but I mean that's none of my business. But I don't care if he can't sing. I mean, I'm only the keyboard player. Yeah, you know, but uh, when you work with Paul Rogers, you know what a real singer is. Mm -hmm. You know, the, a guy with with pain. Uh -huh. And you think uh, Roger hasn't got the talent, or is he more or less limited in in in, in the Who? I put it this way: I think that the Who is the only band he could sing in. Okay. I don't think he would fit anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Paul Rogers, he can he could sing with. Well, I saw him recently with the uh, with the. Uh, with Queen, he was touring with Queen. He did Queen. Yeah. Uh, and his voice was tremendous. Yeah. Not an easy job. Not no, no, no. But also, I've heard him uh, with his own outfit now. Yeah. He lives in Canada now. Yeah. 
and I've heard him, I've seen him on TV and with a soul band like a, like you would expect a black man to have. Yeah. And and he was can I say black? Yeah. Is that legal? Why not? He's so black. It's stupid. His vocal cords are just Marvin Gaye or any of those, mm -hmm. you know, and he can control it just like a, a instrumentalist on a, an instrument who's had a lifetime of experience and, and rehearsal and practice and mm -hmm. learning curves on any other instrument. It is just 100% pristine. Mm -hmm. uh, perfect pitch. Perfect pitch. Yep. I also learned this afternoon that you brought some innovations to reggae music. Oh yeah! When you were playing with uh, Bob Marley and you, you mentioned Johnny Nash. Well, I played with Bob Marley because of Johnny Nash. Ah, Johnny, okay. Johnny Nash got invited. What's first? Johnny Nash. He was first. Yeah, he found me in Houston before I came over here. Okay. And took me to Stockholm. Uh, and I can see clearly now. Yeah, well, we could do, did that in England. But really? He, he was huh? doing a movie over there. Okay. They, they wanted Johnny to do a movie with one of their Swedish actresses. And Johnny got me and uh, another uh, friend called Fred Jordan to come and do the music for it. And, of course, Johnny's songs as well. And so it was, a, it was, like, a, a, it was like a songwriting house in one room. There would be me with my electric piano writing loads of songs. Johnny would have his acoustic guitar in his bedroom or somewhere downstairs <laughs> or outside, you know, doing. And one day I heard him go, ding, 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 ding. And I said, hmm, what that is? That don't, sound like Bob, that don't sound like a Bob thing. That don't sound like a reggae thing, but it was reggae influence, you know. And so uh, later on when we moved to London, I realized it was I Can See Clearly Now. <laughs> you know, and I did all the mega hit. Well, the thing about the I can see clearly real quick is uh, he had a he had a version of it already recorded with guys in Jamaica, but obviously he wanted it to appeal to the world and not just mm -hmm. be a, a normal reggae track. Mm -hmm. So he got me in there to smooth it all out and Americanize it, loads of strings, okay. stuff like that. And so and you did some arrangement also. No, I. Re replaced all the instruments okay that he brought over so we we re-recorded it to just his voice <sighs> then he got another he got a drummer in bass player guitars background singers <laughs> and i did all the keyboards okay. you know from scratch and uh we rebuilt the song okay you know? and uh he was well pleased with it so were we all uh -huh. and uh the the reggae influence was obviously because we had been living with bob in stockholm Okay, together. Yeah, in the same house. Okay. You know, and uh, so each one of us had our own room doing our own music. And Johnny <laughs> could pick. Johnny Nash could pick which ones. Uh, he already published Bob Marley. Uh -huh. So he had all of Bob Marley's collection of songs to choose from. I recorded a tape uh, on a little reel-to-reel -reel tape uh, in, my, in my bedroom where Johnny and Bob were in there. And Bob was on the, on the bed. Uh, with his guitar and Johnny was standing up and Bob was teaching Johnny uh, how to sing uh, Steer It Up and stuff <laughs> like that. And you can, hear, you can hear Johnny in the background picking it up and then he, you can hear him sing a har harmony when Bob's singing. And it, it's, uh, it's awesome. I had to sell it to Island. It's on one of their <laughs> records. Great. It's a, it's a bedroom tapes. Great, great. You know? And uh, you also were involved in Rocky Horror Picture Show? Oh, yeah. That, that was a freaky one. I mean, I don't know where <laughs> that came. I think I got that one because there's a studio there. It's still, well, it's, it's a cinema now, but it was a studio uh, called Olympic Studios. I used to do a lot of sessions there for uh, a producer named Glenn Johns, mm -hmm. who produced the Rolling Stones okay. and all his okay. other earlier bands. And uh, he got me to do Andy Fairweather's uh, albums. Uh, and I did three of Andy Fairweather's albums, Andy Fairweather Low. He did that song called Wide Eyed and Legless. I don't know if they ever had to hear it. Mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da. It was a, number one. It was the number okay. one okay. Uh, in England, and uh, and uh, and the the way Pete found me really originally was uh, Glenn Johns was producing that hit record at one of Pete's old studios, uh -huh. and Pete came to you know check everything out and see what was going on, and uh, and he was so he was hearing me doing that session, and uh, afterwards. 
uh, he, he obviously checked me out, but didn't mention it that day. But the next time I saw him, he had his manager with him at that studio, and then they approached me. Ah, okay. You see, that's okay. how I got approached. And you played on the soundtrack, or or, uh, uh, or or for? Oh, it was a single that I was working on. Okay. I was working on Andy Fairweather Lowe's number one hit, and I did the little solo uh -huh. on the electric piano and stuff. Yeah. And it and it had a steel guitar solo as well, but it was. It's the first record I've been on, apart from Johnny Nash, that was a number one record. Okay, and know? in the Rocky Horror Show, you... you Rocky you, Horror Show... You, you played... That, oh yeah, I worked on the On the soundtrack? Or, or? Oh, on the soundtrack. Yeah. The studio that I recorded these songs I'm telling you about is also... I was doing something there, and then... Uh, so I guess it was... Maybe it was the leader, the Tim, Tim guy or something. Yeah. He approached me and asked me if I would come in and do pianos and stuff on okay. this Rocky Horror Show. I didn't even ask him what it was. <laughs> you know, it, it, you it can't was remember work. any song? or uh, uh, I remember Sarah and Susan did song. Oh, okay. Um, I'm playing all the piano on all of it. Uh, on the whole the soundtrack? Whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the pianos are me. Uh, all the organs are me. Uh, Meatloaf is singing some of it. Uh, Hot so, but duty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bless my soul. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, and and Susan Sarandon, which I thought, wow, that's an actress, isn't it? Yeah. There's an actress singing a song I played on. Cool. <laughs> but uh, and that went that went viral, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Rocky Horror Show. Oh, yeah. Before it was even a, in in a stage or clubs, mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was the freakiest. It was like working on a science fiction movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I enjoyed all of that. Yeah. And you can hear all the rock and roll. The the guy. Tim, whatever his name, produced it. He said, "Rabbit, do your boogies on all this. You know, don't <laughs> don't try to do anything nice. Just do your boogies." <laughs> so there was a lot of Jerry Lee Lewis type stuff on it. Great, you know. great. Uh, w once again, back to the Who. Yeah. What was your best memory with the Who? Best memory with the Who was when I first did a concert in America with a fully loaded baseball stadium, uh, no no empty seats, mm. and the noise. The, the noise that the Who's audience generates is louder than the Who. <laughs> because you can hear it at top decimal levels. Mm -hmm. And it's in circle. And it's just like, wow, this, wow. Sometimes I enjoyed the breaks more than the music <laughs> just to hear the audience. <laughs> I've recorded them and everything. Because I record everything yeah, yeah. on my little recorder. Yeah. And uh, that audience, if you've never heard over 80,000 people screaming, I mean, that's, that's something that most people don't get to hear every day, mm -hmm. you know? But it's a sound of its own. Mm -hmm. the, the, you, can't, you can't really pinpoint anybody in particular. It's just a mass of noise. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. That was when I knew that I was in the right place. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and your worst memory with the Who? Uh, when... My main problem with the Who in the beginning was working for two bosses. Okay. Uh, because whenever there's two bosses, I'm, th I've, I've warned other musicians about that. Pete Townsend, uh, Roger Daltrey. Okay. They each have their own way of doing it. So that means to me they don't get on b uh, with their ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, wh whatever Roger wants to do, Pete don't. And whatever Pete wants to do, Roger don't. And that kind of thing going back and forth when you're at the gig. Mm -hmm. What's the set list? Uh, Pete said he ain't doing that one. Roger won't do this one. And so they're fighting about what they're going to play. Mm -hmm. And so I've warned other musicians, don't work for the band that's got two bosses mm -hmm. because you will eventually be thrown out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. To sum it up, you told us that a friend brought you here today. Yes. To the Music Messe. Mm -hmm. Who is this friend? And I think you've got some musical projects in the coming. Is this correct? Oh, are you talking about mm -hmm. the guy that sang last night? Simon Burrett. You want me to bring him over? Yeah, you can bring him over. Simon! But I think he's, 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 he's at the bar already. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I got to keep him. Simon! Come on! Simon! There you come. Oh, he's been over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's looking after me, too, because he's been right over there listening. Hey man, Simon, sit down a minute. Oh, Simon, come, come, come in our middle. Come oh, in our yeah, middle. Yeah, sure. I was having a little bit of a doze, actually. Where are you now? Yeah, it's not very rock and roll, is it? Well, we can't let you go to sleep, man. Hey. I mentioned that you that that, that you brought Rabbit to yes, the to, right. to, to the music messe. Well, and yeah, but you know, um, 
he, he are you brought drunk? me you, really. You have to sit, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come so on, you sit lay your... back, lay back, so that we can yeah, see you your face. Yeah, you get comfortable. <laughs> oh, oh, do no, you really no, want to at this yeah, time yeah, of day? Listen, listen. Hang on, let me. Do... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So we have to get a little bit back, a little yeah. bit back, so that we can so see we get, rabbit. Oh, have, he's the important one. Maybe like this, rabbit. You have to go a little bit lay back, lay back, lay back, so that we can oh. see your face. Lean on me, boy. Yeah, and to the middle, to the safe. middle. I want to move down. Yeah, no oh, we got you now, okay. man. So, uh, uh, you brought him to the to the uh, music message. Yeah, he brought me. Okay, he, he brought, brought me. I wouldn't be here without Rabbit. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you want to? We hooked up because uh, my band, the Blue Bishops, um, I we shared a record producer, a friend of mine, and I was looking for some keyboards, and he said you've got to have Rabbit. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. uh, he said you've got to have Rabbit, and I said, what? Is he around? He said, yeah. And we hooked up. Rad played on a couple of tracks. They were fabulous. We also had Rod Argent too, so I had two of the Who's keyboard players on my yeah. album, which is perfect. <laughs> and we struck up a good friendship. Rad came and did some BBC sessions with us, which I have to be honest, were better than the actual album when Rad was in the studio. His funny story was when he sat down in front of Hammond, uh, he said, you know, you know what? He said, I played this 30 years ago. It's the same one. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. And now you've got some, some projects together in the Yeah, cabin? well, we just started. We're putting a band together over in England. Although I have to say, the band they gave us here at Music Mass was sensational yes, musicians. Were, we had, wasn't that great? We made some friends immediately. Yeah. yeah. We have had the such whole a band. great time. Yeah. So we got we got some guys we're putting together in England. and um, We're a bit jealous they make more money than we do, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wanted to join theirs, but their keyboard is so good, I, there's no room. They're better than us, man. Okay, so then I, I wish you all the best for your project. Well, that's very, and very kind of journey. you. And have we got a name for this yet? I like the uh, Bad Dogs and Englishmen. I liked that. We're, we're, we don't know what the name is we're, yet, we're but that's a, that is it. possible. Okay. <laughs> but it's a bit long. You will find one. Yeah, we'll find one. Okay. When we find the musician. It's only two of us so far. <laughs> there's no name to have. Okay. Hey, what the hell? We just call ourselves Rab and Simon. All the Why best not? of luck to you. Okay, Rab, thank okay? you. Yes. John Rabbit Bandrick, thank you. Thank you, sir. Simon Burrett, That's thank me. you very much. It's our pleasure. All man. the best. Hey, you, See you I next work. time at the Frankfurt take care. Music Message. Take yeah, care. it's Bye. great. They Bye. probably won't ever invite me back, but how you go? <laughs> <laughs> thank you.